Hi there, I'm Samantha from Using Technology Better. In this short video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Google Docs Explore tool to help students develop their research skills. So one of the most effective ways to do this is for students to actually use the Explore tool in conjunction with the research scaffold. So on my screen, I have an example of a research scaffold that could be used to guide students as they research information for a project, which in this case is an investigation on the damage to the Great Barrier Reef. So this particular scaffold is probably best suited to middle or secondary school students, but you could certainly use the same concept for younger or older students as well. The goal is just to really give them something that helps them summarise, analyse and reflect on the information they find. Now let's take a look about how the Explore tool fits into this. So to access the Explore tool, we need to select the Tools menu up the top and go down to Explore. So this opens the Explore tool on the right hand side. Now the first thing it does is look at the content in your document and try and find information relevant to it. Now because this is just a scaffold um, with information to guide the students, it's not picking up anything relevant. So what we would do instead is come up to the search tool at the top here and pop in some information that you want to search for. So in this case I might actually do coral bleaching and we'll see what pops up. Right, great. So you can see we've got three sections here in the Explore tool, the web, images and drive. So we're going to start with the web and we'll take a look at the other two shortly. So the best way for students to actually use this is to quickly gather some websites that they think might be useful. So typically what they'll do without this kind of scaffold is they might just jump into a Google search and start looking at a whole lot of different websites back and forth between pages and not really assessing and analysing what those ones might mean. So what we do here instead as the instructions guide the students up the top here is we locate some that might be useful. So we don't make the assessment to begin with, we just collect basically a basic reference list that we're going to use to investigate later. And the quickest way to do that is actually just to find a link that looks like it might be useful and drag it, drop it over here. And as per the instructions, I've suggested to students to pop it in the source column. So they could go through there and find a whole lot of different sources and pop them in. And you can see they're building in there. So we might just grab one more, this one here, and pop it in that cell. So when doing so, they've got the name to the website and they've also got the hyperlink. So what they could do next is actually go now and look at each of these sites and come back and then put in the summary of what they think it was about, their analysis and their reflection. Now the other thing this tool do, does really well is actually create footnotes to help the students build a reference list. So obviously here we've got the links to the websites but we might also want them to start building a reference um, list and begin developing referencing skills. So if we come back over here to the research tool, you'll notice up the top here, there's this little three dots. If I click on that, that lets me select a citation format. So the default is MLA, um, a lot of places use APA, so you can pick whatever is, is useful for you. I'm gonna go with APA. So now what I can do is, is I could come over here or anywhere else I've got text and I could actually reference that. So let's go with this one here and you'll notice when I hover over it, I get this little um, citation button. So if I click that now, you'll see it's added as a footnote, the citation to that particular website. So this is something students will probably use more so when they're actually writing up their investigation, but you can get them to do it here as well so as they get a chance to practice and they know how to use the tool. So the other thing we can do, and if I just flip down a little bit on my scaffold, I've given them a second task of gathering some images related to coral bleaching or the Great Barrier Reef, um, damage on the Great Barrier Reef, that they can use in their project. So up the top here where we've got the images section in the research tool, there's a whole lot of different images that they can pick from. So they can click on any of these and it will actually open up a larger preview you can see there and down the bottom it will actually say the image is labelled for commercial reuse with modification. So they can check that, um, that they're actually allowed to use that image. And at this point if they want they can click insert or they can go back and have a look at some other images. So for instance if I decide I do want this one I can just click the little plus and it's going to pop it in my table there. 
and I've just used a table just to control the sizing of the images otherwise they can be quite large or quite small um, the table just keeps it nice and tidy so the last part of this tool is the drive section up the top now this actually looks for other documents in drive that are related to what you're looking for so you can see I've actually got two so if you think students might already have a lot of information about this, you could perhaps create a third section of the scaffold that asks them to insert links to other information they've already got um, about the topic. So I hope that video is useful. Just a few ideas on how you can use the Explore tool to help students build their research skills. And as I said, using a research scaffold is just a really good way to help them structure their thinking and make sure they do do that summary analysis and reflection of the information they find, which is something that can be quite easily overlooked. So thanks for watching.